Let's examine what happens when traffic arrives on a switch port. In this example, traffic arrives. It's placed into an ingress queue. There's multiple ingress queues on our catalyst switches, and these ingress queues can have different priorities. Therefore, we can place more important traffic in a queue with the higher priority than less important traffic. And as a result, that important traffic gets processed first. So voice traffic would go in a higher priority queue than just regular data traffic going out to the internet. When we dive inside the switch, we see CAM tables, we see TCAM tables. And the CAM table is the layer two forwarding table. It is the table with the MAC address entries, the port we can utilize to reach that MAC address, and the VLAN the port is associated with. So this CAM table will be referenced to determine what the egress port is going to be. But there might be security mechanisms in place. There might be quality of service markings or classifications that need to be done. And that's where we can have TCAM tables coming into play for really fast, efficient lookups for security purposes and quality of service. For example, we might have some MAC address access control lists put in place to permit or deny certain frames entry on a particular interface or being able to be uh, exited or forwarded out of the catalyst switch. And we might also have some quality of service markings, or we might have to do some classification on the traffic, and ultimately even determine what egress queue is the frame gonna go into based on whether it's voice traffic or data traffic. So all of these tables are gonna be referenced at some point in time during the process of taking that frame from the ingress queue and ultimately sending it to the appropriate egress queue so it can continue on its journey to the destination device. But how does all this compare now to a multi-layer switch? As we see here, we're dealing with strictly just the, the procedures that a layer two switch would go through. But a multi-layer switch adds on top of that because the multi-layer switch will perform routing as well. So the multi-layer switch needs a layer three forwarding table, a FIB known as the forwarding information base. And inside this forwarding information base, we have the different destination networks that we have learned about, or the switch, the multi-layer switch has learned about. And what is the next top IP address in order to get to that particular destination network? On top of that, in order to make the process even more efficient and quicker, there's next hop MAC address information in there as well. And the egress port that's gonna be utilized in order to reach that particular destination network. So all of this information is down at the hardware layer. It's in our application specific integrated circuits. So that way there, the processor, the CPU, the RAM doesn't have to be referenced. We don't have to perform slow lookups by using the CPU. We have these, these circuits down in hardware at the interface level that can quickly and efficiently determine what to do with the frames and what to do with these packets that need to be processed.